this is Mrs. McGlinty. So today I want to talk to you a little bit about the supplies you would use for Waldorf watercolor painting, doing the wet on wet watercolor. So the paper that I usually use is from Mercurius, but Mercurius only sells to schools. And so if you cannot get the Mercurius paper, you can also use, there's the Strathmore paper, which works really well. And then there's also Canson paper. And the 140 pound paper is really a good choice to use when you're doing watercolor. And then the brushes I like to use, here is the one inch flat, we can also call it Peter Paint Brush. I like this one especially because it has a scraping handle that I use a lot. Cotman makes a really good brush like this and it's reasonably priced. Then this brush is called a round brush and I like the number 12 the number 10 round is also a really good brush. And then you might want to have a detail brush like this. This is a Cotman brush. So traditionally the Waldorf watercolors are done with paints that are, are in a wood container so that they don't tip over. And then they have a lid on them. And so normally I, these are the five colors I use. So we have ultramarine blue, carmine red, lemon yellow, but then we also have two other colors. So this is the Prussian blue, which has a little bit more of an aqua color and it's really vibrant. And then we have a warm yellow that's called a golden yellow. So if you were just starting off and you weren't able to get all of the colors, you weren't ready to do that, I would just get these three but these colors are lovely colors. Now there is a set that you can get and it's made by Stockmar and this has all six of the colors in it. Because you can mix these colors four to four parts of water to one part of color, they do extend out pretty well and they will last you for quite a while. So these come in little containers like this. So this paint here that I enjoy using makes a lot of sense if you're a teacher, but there's a lot of paint in here, which is great, but it would probably last you at least a year. And you may want to think about the smaller 50 milliliter size. And then this size that comes in this sampler set, these are 20 milliliter size. There's another option. Stockmar has a set of pan watercolors where it's similar to this idea pan watercolors, but instead of getting six colors, you get 12. And they are the Stockmar quality paints, and they're very reasonably priced. So you might want to order that on Amazon, or maybe there's a local store that you can get them at. And there's also a lot of other internet retailers that you can buy the Stockmar paints from. And so what you would want to do is you would put your color in first to your container, and then you would add water to it. So it's important not to add the water first. What you want to do is you add the color first to the container. A little tray like this can be really handy to mix the colors in. And then we need some place that we can be soaking our paper. And so I have a container here that is a little bit larger than what you might use to wash your dishes and is a really good size to soak the paper in. And we usually soak the paper, I usually soak it for about five to 10 minutes. Then the other thing that we're going to be needing is we're gonna need a drying cloth. It might be, might be just a, a linen napkin. And then we need a, what I call a painting cloth. And that could be like an old washcloth. And what you would do with this is you would use this to dry your brushes with. You want to keep the drying cloth as clean as possible because if you're going to be drying off a lot of different papers, you don't want to have a lot of paint on that cloth. So this is the drying cloth. And so I'll gently lay it over my paper like this to dry it.
So let's just do something really simple to just kind of get started. Let's, let's just do two colors, yellow and red. Let's mix up the yellow from the bottom. And you notice I don't have that much paint in my jar. We don't need a lot of paint. Usually it goes a really long way. So you just mix just a small amount of paint each time until you use that up and then mix another small amount of paint. So glorious yellow was just like the sun and she shone so, oops, almost used the wrong one. And she shone so brightly. And then we rinse our brush. And I like to always, after I rinse my brush, I like to go ahead and dry it on my cloth. I'm gonna mix up the red. Red was known as the magician. And red was filling all the corners of the world, but he hadn't met yellow yet. They weren't friends, they'd seen each other, but they hadn't really met as friends. So we're not gonna touch yellow and red yet. But when you do touch yellow and red together, you're gonna to have a beautiful, surprising color. Red was a courageous fellow, and he was very bold, but he knew that yellow liked to have her own space. And so he was just waiting patiently. Well, now it was time for yellow and red to meet. So we just take our brush like this, right around like that. And you will see that you've made a beautiful orange color. So when red and yellow meet, they make orange. And if you want to make a little bit more orange, go over it one more time. Like that. And now they were friends and they could go out and play and they did and they had a wonderful time. And then we can use the back of our brush handle and we can put our initials. So I hope that you enjoy doing these paintings, all these exercises and lessons that I've prepared for you. And I really look forward to painting with you again. Bye-bye.